Welcome, I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. From our BizVision studios in the UK, you're watching the BBTV network. Now, for over 30 years, my life consisted of traveling the world as an international motivational speaker, driving and flying thousands of miles, pressing the flesh, moving on to the next venue. Then came the COVID and the shutters came down and the world of events changed. So we changed here at this vision, probably just in time, as my bones were starting to creak from travel. They looked as shattered as the, my suitcase I was carrying. This last year, I've interviewed nearly 500 guests, appeared on various shows myself, launched online membership clubs, and have never left my online studio here in Northumberland. Now, all this change, which will alter little, I believe, for the future, has created a new operational demand, which will grow in its need. I wanted to find out how businesses and event organizers especially are going to meet that operational demand. So who better to talk to than the team at Venue IQ? So let's go and say hello to Oliver Rowe. Hello, Oliver. Hi, Malcolm. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And you are in one of my favourite parts of, of, of the country down there in, in Stafford near Staffordshire, near Barton and Dunedwood, aren't you? That's mm. right. Yes, yes. Uh, in this working from anywhere new world that we've got, so we, we don't need to travel to see each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm fortunate to be in Northumberland, but I, I, I could be easily socially isolated down in Barton and Dunedwood quite Quite easily, quite easily there. Yeah. Oh, Oliver, I'm, del <laughs> Oliver, I'm delighted you're kindly guesting on our BBTV Top Gun sales and marketing channel. Viewers and listeners, in this BBTV show, I'll be talking to Oliver in three parts. First, I'll ask him, what is Venue IQ and why is it important at this time in the business world? In part two, we'll move to talking about how effective he thinks virtual conferences and meetings can be as compared to the former face-to-face -face, or mask-to-mask -mask as it is at the moment. In part three, um, I'm asking Oliver to get out his crystal ball to tell us how he thinks what format events will look like in the future. Oh, and then I'm sneaking in a last extra question on top of all that. Oliver, let's start our talk in our part one with what is Venue IQ in your mind? Obviously, viewers and listeners can go to your website, but what are you proud about what Venue IQ does and how it does it? Yeah, thanks, Malcolm. That's, that's a great place to start because the name doesn't give too much away in terms of what we do. Um, so I think the, the first and foremost, we are a technology provider to uh, events, traditionally uh, business events, trade shows, conventions, that kind of thing. Um, and we started our life... Uh, in, in, in tracking delegates and giving analytics on how delegates would uh, interact with an event or a venue. But we quicker, quickly realized that we needed like the front end and the reason for the uh, delegate to get involved and to uh, want to be tracked and have a little bit of personal uh, information shared with the event organizers in this wonderful world of uh, GDPR that we're all in now. Um, and, and so we had to build an app. So there's lots of events app, event apps out there um, uh, in, in our marketplace, but we, we just spent time to build the very best front end experience for them because ultimately it's about the delegate experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we did very, very well. We, we uh, built on the app. We uh, had uh, companies um, such as uh, Founders Forum, which is uh, a, a, a big tech entrepreneurial business ran by Brent Hoberman, who started lastminute.com, who really embraced our tracking technology. Uh, and we built that into our app so they could, uh, the venture capitalists could hunt down the, uh, the, the tech startups they wanted to chat to and maybe invest in, or um, deals would get done between big tech companies to come together. Um, but all that was based on face-to-face uh, meeting. We uh, we won uh, best conference app award. We won best use of AI for the matchmaking we were doing within the app and really connecting people. And then COVID hit. Yes. So 100% of our business <laughs> yeah. came from those events. So myself and and uh, Philip, my co-founder, we were sat in our offices in March, almost a year ago to the day, thinking, "Hmm, this COVID thing sounds like it's going to be tricky. Yeah, it, let's see how it goes." Um, and then it kind of came into the 24th of March and we were like, hmm, everyone's working from home now. This isn't so good. And um, I, I always um, remember a story from uh, the, the UFI, which is um, 
Uh, they're based in uh, in Europe, but they're the global sort of uh, association for events. And by that point that we were having those thoughts, already 500 major trade shows around the world have been cancelled yeah. in that uh, very early stage. I, it and, was frightening then. I, I watched them daily stop clustering. Oh, it was catastrophic, really. And, and, and they estimated just in those few weeks of, of cancellations, there was something like £20 billion worth of trade lost between business deals that would have been done at these these, these yeah. trade shows. And it wasn't just huge trade shows, was it? It was everything. It was down to the uh, smaller events, the, the the business meetings, the mm, yeah. um, just that <laughs> the all human connection in terms of physical connection was lost. And I just think how many deals and, and, and business, business uh, I've won because I've been face to face, because I've been able to get the, the passion across, because they can see the whites of your eyes and, and uh, your body language and you can read theirs and you know where you're going with a sale or with a, an order. You lost all that overnight and technology is amazing and things like Zoom and Teams and everything has kind of enabled us to have some of these conversations, but it's not quite the same. So for us, Venue IQ had to, and I'll use the 20... Uh, 20 buzzword pivot quickly uh, to take the backbone of everything we did and put it all online. Mm. Now, th- bear in mind, all of us are now working from home. We have our UK employees, we have our dev team, some of whom are here and some who are in, in India, and everyone was sent home. Now, India is amazing. It's got some amazing talent there. Most of our guys have been with us for, and for so long now. Uh, since the, the birth of the product and uh, they're, they're, they're just incredible people and obviously you know they can wholeheartedly claim all responsibility for our award wins for our product over the, the last five years um, but they were sent home and yeah, their internet yeah, was yeah. terrible we had to uh, make sure they could access our servers we had to I mean we had no events to deliver right so we had time um, but we had to think about well what do we do and we saw some of our competitors move quickly into linking in with other products that were already available and trying to do a bit of a mishmash of, of, of some kind of online thing. And it was a bit clunky. And I attended some of those events as a attendee and as a, as a, as a uh, exhibitor. And while we were doing that, we were like, it's got to get back to live somehow, right? Sometime, mm-hmm. you know, then I think we were all like, oh, by summer, it will, we'll be all back. But we were like, what if, what if it's not? You know, we, we've gone from do, having our best quarters ever to zero and yeah. not only zero people pushing it down the line when their event might be or oh, we'll do our event that was in march we'll do it in september and then september would come and oh it's going to be in february or whatever Some yeah. Still are. yeah 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 um, so thankfully we, we did that and we did it from a point of view of how can we make sure there is a world where what we have already the app and uh, the the tracking how can we make sure that supports the return to live? How can we make sure that we're still giving value? So they haven't got to learn a whole new platform. They haven't got to get used to us on virtual. And then as soon as they're back to live, go, oh, we can't use you anymore. Um, so we built everything with the, uh, you've probably seen, and you'll know this, Malcolm, some of the, 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 the listeners and viewers might know this as well. You know, hybrid is a big buzzword. There's some yeah, yes, yeah. very big unicorn businesses, very highly publicized that have been having hundreds of millions of dollars of, of venture capitalist money invested in them right now. And it's, it's all very impressive and it all gives them massive valuations. But some of these companies didn't exist two years ago. And I think, you know, we're very proud of the fact we're privately owned. We, we control our product and our, um, our company ethos and our um, team entirely we're not beholden to anyone else which is i think really important in this fast moving environment we have won deals off some of these big players uh, and we've always been used to being the underdog and fighting against these huge national uh, backed uh, internationally backed uh, you know multi-billion dollar companies um with our other tech products like buddy crm is our, is our other products and you know our competitors there are the microsoft's and sales forces of the world so it's, it's no different in the event space and i think because we took the time and we thought about it, you know, our first, our first version of the platform went live and a few days later we ran a huge uh, construction event, which was five days, 100 hours of content, five streams of content. We'd never streamed before as a business. Yes, we, right. we were running all this for them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the team absolutely dug in, everyone. The developers were on hand. Everyone did stupid hours to get it done. And we delivered it. And the client was delighted. Uh, they expected a few thousand people to show up. They had 6,000. They gave wow. a thousand extra bits of data from it that they never had from their uh, live show before. And off the back of that, it's propelled them into this 
kind of virtual space for now, which is all linking back into when they can eventually return to live, which has moved a few times. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I like to, I like to think that the, the the people are the thing that's made me the proudest because we're you know we're we're I always think of us as that that small kind of tugboat darting in between all these big horrible old trawlers that are going really slow. The big boys who've got to um, have all these board meetings about everything that happens and it has mm. to go through a hundred people before something changes. Whereas if a client comes to us and goes, "Oh hey, we want this bit of functionality. Can you do it?" You know, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you've just tell, illustrated what is best about small businesses moving yeah. forward. That's agility and adaptability, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's given us the, uh, it's, 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 it's always uh, lovely. Um, and our industry, you know, the event industry is great. And, you know, I know most of the um, uh, competitors on a, on a friendly basis. There's a lot of respect there. And there's certainly plenty of business for us all. And, uh, you know, you come across the same names all the time and they all have really, really good products. Yeah. But I think what sets us apart is we care. You know, our people will go the nth mile. You know, we, we, we had an event over the weekend, which was our biggest ever, which was over 23,000 people over a weekend. Mm. And we were not the cheapest. We were not the most expensive. We were probably somewhere in the middle in terms of cost. That's a good place to be. Um, but they, um, they d- definitely got their... Um, support and their usage and you know at one point we knew at the start of the event where users are just getting onto the platform for the first time that's when it's a bit busier so you know everyone chipped in everyone was on the chat uh, for the, with the end with their end users they're not our users they're their yeah. delegates oh, yeah. but we want to yeah. make sure they have a good experience mm. and I know hand on heart not all of our competition does that and yeah. you yeah. hear it in the feedback and it's a shame because their platforms look amazing but then if you let it down on the customer service side and support side you know, this is new to event organizers. You can't just leave them and then go, ah, oh, because you need our help, we're going to charge you a thousand pounds. It's like, it, 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 it doesn't sit right with me. So we're really open with our customers about what we can do, how we do it. We, we, all, we, we never let anyone buy from us without them seeing the product working live mm. because we can show them a PowerPoint or a PDF. That's a naff way of selling. It's, you've got to let them, you know, in the old days, you touch and feel it, don't you? you, you yes, yes, yes. Yep. Item in your hand. Obviously mm. now we're in the world of, you know, the Amazons and everything uh, online, uh, it's kind of, you see it, don't you, on a screen uh, yeah. more, more often than not, which, uh, which is, is what we're doing and, mm. and trying to then excite the delegates by showing some really good content. So content is front and centre, whereas some other people will put networking front and centre because obviously to you and me, we want to network when we go to events and meet people. But actually, the people are only going to go if the content's any good. Yeah, so, yes. of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I think is exciting, uh, though, is that, um, there's a whole new raft of customers that are awaiting you. You know, with Brexit, we're being encouraged to look to other parts of the world. Uh, yeah. We, for example, have just broken into Africa this last uh, couple of weeks there with, with our activity. Um, and we've never been there, no. you know, or would have had any intention of going there. Yeah. We've already done Australia and New Zealand and, and all that. And mm. um, we haven't had to move. You know, so yeah. you can experiment on new yeah. new areas, new resources and yeah. all that. So before we move to part two, Oliver, I'd just like to remind viewers and listeners of your website URL, which is obviously on the screen behind me for, for viewers. And that's um, all the W's. This is for listeners, by the way. <laughs> all the W's. Venue, V-E-N-U, no, no E, V-E-N-U, hyphen, iq.com i reckon oliver's just done that to test me you know venue yeah, hyphen iq venu hyphen iq.com for listeners and um viewers i hope you've taken that down do pop along and you'll start to understand a, a lot clearer by going there as to what oliver and i are chatting about oliver time for part two now the world of events conferences getting together has changed And I suggest many companies, like us, for example, have seen the financial and physical benefits of doing it all virtual. How affected do you think virtual conferences can be compared to that original face-to-face? Now, I I know, uh, obviously, the benefits of a relationship, seeing the uh, colour of their eyes or whatever it may be there. But what can this new style achieve? And what's the pros and cons? Yeah, I think it's, it's it's a really good question. They and it's 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 not a simple answer, right? Because mm-hmm. um, human beings, by our very nature, we love to you know meet, shake hands, talk, um, make new connections with people um, 
on a physical, on a sort of mental level as well. Yeah. Uh, chat, chat through things like we are doing today, but you know, it could be over a beer that you actually do a deal mm. at an event rather than actually at the event itself because you oh, meet. I'll, I'll pour your glass now, should I? <laughs> oh, that'd be great, fantastic. <laughs> and it's it's it. So it has absolutely transformed. Um, certainly in the short to medium term, how events can be held because there's no other choice, right? It's yeah. either you bury your head in the sand and deliver nothing or you embrace what technology there is out there. And there's a lot of technology. And I think, I think the early days, people uh, very quickly turned to the likes of Zoom. Uh, and obviously they saw massive growth. I mean, multi-billion uh, uh, dollar growth in their, in their business. And uh, I think there's a story just recently that uh, he's transferred uh, 40% of his uh, share, some $6 billion worth to uh, his, uh, his family for the future. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't worth that much a year ago. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. And, and how fast these platforms are developed. Now, as far as events are concerned, I think um, the organizers that have done really well did embrace technology and they just tried to do something and they, sometimes failed they sometimes did really well and i think that's you know we as a, a technology provider we have features and things we develop and we'll they never get used but we think they might do um we we develop features that we want to work in a certain way and they get used in a completely different way to what we ever imagined and i think that's one of the exciting things about um uh, if i can say uh, a, a positive out of the whole COVID situation is it has in my mind tr transported us technologically probably 10 years in terms of the adoption because the tech yeah. was there. Tech yeah. was already there. So it's not new. What we're doing isn't new. And uh, probably 10 years ago, there was talk about, oh, everything moving virtual and everyone using these new things, uh, you know, to uh, do webinars and things. And, and uh, it just didn't really take off because people craved that, um, that interaction. So I think what, what organizers started to do was they, they tried those things through webinars to begin with. And some just went in absolute all guns blazing. Let's just do an online event. They'd never done it before. Let's just do it. Uh, the, the one I mentioned earlier, I think we were appointed like two weeks before the event. This is a massive event. Yeah. And uh, wow. we were like, right, this is going to be tricky. But they had to, they had some pre-recorded content. They had some live content. It was all mixed in together. And as I said earlier, we'd never done <laughs> the whole streaming for, but they had no support from it. They had no, you know, they, they'd never done streaming on a mass event before like this because normally you rock up at your event and your AV team's there sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And I, so I think, I think it's, it's the, 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 the pro of it, I guess, or the big pro is suddenly content does become the key thing. Mm. And I, I know I said it earlier, but I can't stress enough. And it's not just because we put content sort of front and center on our platform. It's because we believe hand on heart, that that is why people go to events. Yes. Online events, you only have to look at the growth of companies like Netflix and uh, Amazon's Prime services and Disney Plus, obviously, who conveniently launched in the UK about a week before uh, the, the all, uh, as the COVID lockdown <laughs> happened here at the end of March. So that was that was good, uh, good, uh, a bit of luck for them. But but these things grow for a reason, because, you know, I don't, I don't watch TV live ever now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, a Approaching my 40s, I have a young family and we don't watch anything on telly. But obviously we do, but we, we stream it or we play mm. it back later. Yeah. And I think what everyone hoped and what everyone got really emotional about is I'm doing an event, it's lasting all day and no one's turning up. Or 20% mm. or 50% of people are turning up. And we were like, well, it's because it's online. Yeah. So yeah. why would they? They, they, yeah. They've got the kids at home. They've got, you know, we've all seen the, the, the comedic kind of news interviews where someone's kid runs in and they're talking about something really serious. They have to run after them and they're just wearing a shirt and nothing else. And, yeah. and you know, you've seen all those on, on, uh, happen through, throughout COVID. And that, that, Just to interrupt there, Oliver, it's a really interesting point you've just made there because one of the challenges that we've had with uh, uh, people like the PR companies that we deal with is said, oh, we've just looked at your numbers there uh, and there's not that many coming through at the time. So, no, that's when people, you know, the majority of people watch it later on. And, yeah. you, you know, you might have a, a, a show that we've just recorded and put out onto YouTube and it's got, shall we say, uh, a couple of hundred viewers. And then within a week, it's got 5,000 viewers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's exactly the same for live events. And it was a real, it was a real switch for event organizers, I think, mm. because obviously, you know, you do a big trade show and, you know, you've got the vanity numbers, which is there's 20,000 yeah. people coming to this. Then you've yeah. got the real numbers, which is 500 VIP buyers who are actually going to buy something. Yes, yes, and totally. All of those people are important because it all helps fund the event and it all helps attract sponsorship and all that kind of stuff. And I think once organizers got their heads around the fact that 
forget vanity numbers because they might come anyway and mm -hmm. forget the fact that people aren't going to watch live it doesn't have to be live we can stream it as live but it doesn't have to be live you take away a lot of the headache and a lot of the worry and a lot of the stress yeah. that comes with doing a online live event you know oh their internet's gone down well it doesn't matter if you filmed it a week ago yeah. just tell the people that are doing it not to mention the fact it's a tuesday when in fact it's a thursday yeah. or yeah. next week i hope to hear about this well that's already happened now so yeah. it's it's little things like that. And I guess we've learned along, along with them, you know, obviously the content itself isn't really our, our thing. That's, that's for the, the, the client to kind of decide what that's going to be. But hopefully our platform enables them in a really flexible way to do that first. And then they get off the back of that, people asking questions in the Q&A feature or yeah, they'll be part of the poll. Or yeah. we have like session group chats. So they might start a chat off. No one says anything about it, but someone watches it tonight and then they join in the chat and then they can link together and they can connect and they can do a one-to-one -one video chat. And, and all of a sudden you're getting kind of near to what might happen at a live event, but actually people can do it in their own time. And I said earlier uh, when we were talking that what I think we've all realized is that, yeah, you know, it costs money to uh, exhibit at a trade show or sponsor a trade show or go to a trade show or take part in an award ceremony or whatever it might be, or do a corporate event, even like training or whatever it might be. But then people have also got that time in traveling there. So they might lose an hour, two hours a day if it's abroad. Uh, um, more than that, I, I did a big event in San Antonio. It took two days to get there. And that was just flying across Texas. Yeah, I can imagine. And it's, I think that, you know, people talk about return on investment. We'll talk about your time, yeah. you know, so much more. I think people have had to, I've had I've been a victim of it myself where you have Zoom after Teams after Zoom after Zoom and before you know it you're like hang on a second I haven't had a, I haven't had a break because my break used to be driving in between meetings yeah. whereas actually now I can be far more efficient I can do double the amount of meetings in a day and still have time for other things and, and I, don't forget Oliver you only have to get half dressed as well <laughs> yeah I did get fully dressed for you today I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, subject you to that um so I think, yeah, I think that the big pro is that. Now, I would say that the, the, the con is still the, the difficulty in uh, sponsors understanding that there is still value in it. And yeah. that's obviously a big, big concern of, of, of people. Um, but I think if, if, you're, if you as an organiser are saying to a sponsor, you are going to get exactly the same value from an online event, you're probably yeah. lying to them. Yeah. And it's not going to cost you as much. You haven't got the venue high, you haven't got the caterers, you haven't got um, the, uh, you know, AV teams and the equipment hire for the speakers and the, the you know microphones and the hotel costs and the list goes on. Um, but there is still an opportunity and sometimes it's a bigger audience. That's what shocked people the most. Mm. You know, this event we did at the weekend, they were hoping to get like 5,000 people. They had 23,000 people register. Yeah. So that is a big, you know, that is a big gulf of what we expected and they expected. And it was by far the most um, successful event in terms of the numbers of people that have been there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's opening your eyes, isn't it? It's opening the eyes of these new people. Uh, yeah. and let me just give you a quick example of that. I was doing an interview this week with a guy about his book on Saudi Arabia. And then he says, oh, do you mind if um, if the footage is used by a, a major, major uh, uh, American-based um, news company that begins with B and it ends in G, but never mind, I'll let you work that one out. And you know, am I going to say no that this major international channel wants to use the footage that we're producing from this Zoom call? Absolutely not, exactly. And it, it's opened up these new opportunities. And I think the other thing uh, I've noticed is they had exhibitors pay to exhibit at some of these things that would never have travelled to London or to France or no. to too far away uh, because the cost to enter that market was too much and and us as a business ourselves you know we were uh, predominantly UK based we've done events that technically take place in the in the US or France or Germany or further afield we've done we did a, a, some stuff for uh, one of the government departments that took place in Singapore uh, where they connected with people in the northeast here and, and Singapore over there and all these things were not possible before that would have been like a whole week's long trip for them yeah At great expense rather than relatively modest expense on, on our platform. And, mm -hmm. and I think that is the big, um, the, the big benefit, I guess. But the caveat is absolutely 100% in some shape or form, physical events will return. But I don't think we will lose um, uh, the, the, the features because sadly, um, it doesn't sound like COVID is going to go away in, in its entirety. You know, uh, Technology is not just about, you know, event platforms and 
Zoom and, and the online shopping experiences and all the restaurant kits at home you can get now, which is all fantastic stuff to come out of COVID. But um, I don't believe that um, they'll just disappear. I really don't. Right, no. and, and, and as you and I have, have discussed before we started this, business, businesses, particularly big businesses, are seeing the benefits of work from home and reducing yeah. their reducing their uh, footage of uh, of premises and so on, aren't they? Yeah, and we were probably guilty before um, COVID of going, mm, we'd like to do more events and sell more events in uh, France and Germany and the yeah. US, uh, Dubai. And we were probably a bit, I mean, we're a tech firm, right? So we shouldn't be set in our ways, but we, were, we used to seeing people because we like that. Well, we've got our, our first um, opening in France in the next couple of weeks. So we are launching there. We're launching in the States a couple of months later. And this would probably never have been possible if it wasn't for the yeah. advancements we've made in our own technology. Yeah, and uh, I, the, I, the I, same the same with us. You know, we we've suddenly become strong in in Los Angeles uh, mm-hmm. with some big event organizers, mm-hmm. big big people there, and we were unknown there last no- March. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which absolutely. is exciting. Yeah, and the yeah. opportunity I think is that you can still get sponsors. Um, yeah, you can tie it into physical events very easily. We have our hybrid option where they can people that, that visit there live can use the app. They can communicate still by video or by text or, or whatever with with virtual people who sadly will still not be able to go because, you know, if we're all hopeful that it's 80% uh, of, of suppressing or reducing the, the effects of the virus on people, you can still catch it. Even if you've, mm. even if you've been vaccinated, you can oh. still spread it you, as far as they know. And yeah. um, a, a friend of mine has, has had the both vaccines very early on. It was when it was still a few weeks apart and uh, she has suffered. She's caught COVID and she's been really bad with it still, but not as bad as she would have been. But obviously, she can't go anywhere for two weeks either now. Yeah, and that, yeah. that is a real risk to event organisers. And it's not just when I say event organisers now, my my scope has changed. I'd have been talking about the our niche is probably up to the five thousand attendee conferences back in back in the old days, you know, yeah, in, yeah. in twenty nineteen and early twenty twenty. Uh, that was where we were really successful. But we're now working with government departments. We're doing work with associations, confederations. We're doing work with international companies. We're doing work with uh, corporates doing their delivering their internal training. Yeah. Right, they, they're all events. People forget it's not just the business events; it's all the other stuff that connects us as well. Um, so I think we've been able to add value to 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 yeah. those types of events as well. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Now let's move to part three, and it's crystal ball time. <laughs> Where do you see events going to in the future? I know we've been dilly dallying and backwards in thoughts, but my, my thought is that the hybrid model will emerge very strongly. You know, some part face-to-face, some part virtual, and a hybrid of the two. Uh, I can't see it going back to -to face-to-face because of the savings that are there. But will the savings kill off the face-to-face? How flexible is Venue IQ to meet any such changes? Yeah, so I think I think as you say, we've we've covered it a little bit in in the conversations earlier, and I was trying not to give too much away too too soon. But um, we built the online version of our platform to allow for that hybrid world. That was our belief back in April May last year. We we didn't see it going away completely. Now, what might happen is that um, for a time certainly is that maybe it will be the you know the most valuable players will be at the physical event. And everyone else can watch online. Yeah. It might be that international travel is stopped from a certain country, and that's a, a big proportion of your delegates. Yeah. So yeah. you need to quickly flip online. So maybe organizers won't take as big a risk. Now, there's some real brilliant organizers out there who are literally going organs blazing, let's get back to live, let's get back to live. But I do think they maybe are fighting against what has happened in terms of because that's their traditional business model. And I I think those that embrace a bit of hybrid are going to do really well. Uh, you only have to look at things that the big guys like the informers of the world are, are saying, you know, they want to get back to life, but they know technology is going to, going to play a big part. Uh, it's similar with the investments being made in, in, in some of the competitors we have at the moment in terms of the VC money. They obviously think it's a good bet that technology is here to stay. And we've, we've fought it for years where people are just, you know, oh, we don't need an app because we've got a brochure. And it's like, you're missing the point of what the app can deliver, the connections beyond the event. And I think that is the big, that is probably my, my big prediction that, that it, you know, not, not, not so much about communities, because I think people still need, still need pillars of things to go to, but it tends to be similar people that return to the events. It tends to yeah. be 
people that get a lot out of it. And if they can't attend for any reason, they can still they still want to engage with the sponsors or the speakers or the sessions, the content, maybe round tables that can be part live, part digital. Um, there's so much scope for that now that was always around, but it didn't quite all come together. And I think organisers are far more aware of it now, especially corporates. Yes. I think the money saving side of things, especially with things like corporate training, where it's, you know, or, or maybe corporate meetings where it is just a couple of hours and you don't want people traveling, you know, from all over the country. And let's not forget, we're also, as well as COVID and the financial issues of the world, we're facing the biggest climate crisis ever. Without a doubt. Yes. And I yeah. think technology will help reduce people's carbon footprints. It will help people, when appropriate, meet more responsibly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and again, we, we all love that human interaction, but some of it does not need to be face to face. Yeah. Some and the- that's quite interesting as well, because lots of big companies like uh, Vodafone, for example, uh, who are now saying we want to track the um, carbon reduction of our suppliers. Yeah. And I'm, we're just working with one co- organization that really does say even down to using a taxi you know, mm. d- d- taking the taxi out. And that's going to be very, very much a part of, of the whole procurement process, the whole relationship process in the future. Now, I, Oliver, I want to sneak in an extra question, if that's okay. all right with you. Okay. As the founder of three, well, we'll be going up soon to six online membership clubs. I'm pretty keen on them. And I think that's the way that the world was, but will be going. But then I've been planning them for many years. So you know, the content, etc. I've noticed that your app software will help membership club owners. Tell us about it and how it does it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's an interesting one. So we have worked with some membership organizations to do various things, but ultimately, as you quite right said, it's about content. It's about some of them will, maybe they've got a, uh, a training course to book on or a particular speaker they want to see. And I think what the app and the online platform will allow is to kind of allow people to join that from wherever they are. So if they are local and they can make that trip and it is cost efficient and time efficient and climate efficient as well, um, then they can do so through the app or obviously now through our online platform because what's really important is the backbone of uh, that runs everything in our ecosystem is all one. So it's one single ecosystem. So they can just have the app, they can just have the online platform, they can have a, a, a hybrid of the two. And whether that's a corporate or a membership organization, so a membership organization will be more of a community feel, so it's always on. So you might share a news feed that's permanent or content permanently. So that kind of takes the place of where the session is. But within that app, you can also have what we call a container, which allows you to also host specific ex- events within that that maybe only a certain type of member can see. Maybe you filter out the content based on how much they've paid or the type of membership they have. Maybe they're a, a, a you know a, a key sponsor, so they get a, you know some advertisement on there and stuff like that as well. So I think that technology can definitely help with that sort of thing. Brilliant. Yes. My personal world has changed so much in this past year as I've, there's that word again, pivoted to virtual. But we were lucky about that because here at BizVision, we'd started planning it for some time and we'd set up our own studio, as you can see here. But there's more to it than that. You need the right support platform, as you found out today from Oliver Rowe of Venue IQ. Thanks, Oliver, for a great interview. Malcolm, thanks very much for inviting me on. It's been great to chat.